Hello you guys, welcome back to Channel Claire. Hope that you're doing well wherever you are in this crazy, crazy world. I am home finally on this Monday and I can sit, have my red wine, and watch The Real Housewives of Potomac episode two, which I'm really excited about because I feel like we're gonna get more into the juice this episode of what's going on and what the storylines are gonna be and kind of break down the trajectory of the rest of the season we're going to know who's having beef what drama what rumors all of that is going to be laid out within this episode i'm pretty sure so um i'm going to take a look i know that we're going to get more robin and juan stuff but quite honestly at this point because i did see a clip where karen was like oh and this is really me getting a you know ahead of myself but i did see the clip so I might as well talk about it but karen straight up asked robin like are you in a traditional marriage or is it an open marriage like she went there and asked that question that everybody really wanted to know because with that response you can kind of take it one way or another if it's open well then fuck it don't nobody need to say shit if it's traditional and we see and hear things then it's kind of more of a concern now robin did say the marriage is traditional so when you have a traditional marriage typically that means it's just two people in the relationship we know in the past there has been, you know, alleged cheating and we know that Juan has been out here making Robin look, it's just a sad situation. Juan is moving in a way that is so foul for a man, I can't even put it into words. Like he knows he's making his wife look an ass and look pathetic to the public. And I think that that is so wrong like like you just can't stop at all for the simple fact that you know that your wife is being hurt like it's so sick like when you really really think about what Juan is doing knowingly and the fact that he does not care it's sick so um we're gonna get into some more stuff I hope that this is not just the Robin and Juan show again uh like the last episode was but it is kind of a big deal because the storyline was left out last season so they're kind of having to rehash everything so we're gonna get into it and we'll see how it goes so this whole Kiki Palmer situation just gets deeper and deeper and sadder and more concerning as the days go on which I kind of feel like we knew it would um, just because of how shocking it was to begin with and we really did not know Kiki was dealing with this behind the scenes and she also had her mother whom came out and spoke about this situation made a video let us know that hey um, Darius's brother who tried to tweet out that his brother was the most vile person that he didn't know this was going on tried to like distance himself from everything knew exactly what was going on because Kiki's mom had let him know and in fact Darius's brother said he was similar and was doing the same things you know um so like let's please stop and I'm just really saddened and um, I'm, I'm saddened, I guess. I'm, I'm just really confused um, about how even though we have pictures of this situation and of the altercation, it's still not enough. She's being questioned already. And I'm like, I really hope that this is not one of these things that like divide the community, you know? like the whole uh Meg the Stallion situation like people thinking she got shot people not thinking uh she got shot um by that man who is currently in jail to this day people still do not believe he did it they don't um so now we have the situation with Kiki Palmer where we have pictures where you would think that that would be enough proof because just your word nowadays is not enough it's it's that's just what it is nowadays just your word is not enough if something happens to you you need to have proof you need to have documentation to back it up or it's going to be hard for you to be believed and i really do think that ah and the whole johnny that Dutch scenario has really done a disservice to victims everywhere she has really done a disservice and to see her out and about she was just at some uh another festival this past weekend like the movie has flopped okay like nobody gives a fuck literally no one gives a fuck 
Then Whitney Heard, her sister is out there with her wearing a shirt talking about some I stand with Amber Heard. Like, girl, please, please give it up. We know you guys. Oh my God, they're so effing deranged. But they, people like them have now made it hard for victims, for any, any victims anywhere to be questioned or to be believed. And it's so sad that you're going to, if you want to come forward with something you need to make sure your ducks are in a row you need to make sure you have proof you need to make sure you have x y and z because you coming and just telling somebody what happened to you that's not going to be enough that's not going to be enough so now the situation is that uh of course Darius is claiming that he's done nothing He's never abused Kiki. He's done no wrong. He's done nothing that we should be talking about. He should not have a restraining order. He should not have no visitation of his son. None of those things. So I'm just like, he's sick. He's fucking sick. We saw you with our own eyes. I saw the picture that particularly sticks out in my head is the one where they were over on the steps and it really did look like from the angle that he was like choking her up you know and I'm just like the moment you put your hands around someone's neck that is just like oh my gosh I like to even go there in your mind to put your hands around someone's neck allegedly from what it looked like from the angle that's what it looked like to me um deranged completely deranged so he's saying that he hasn't done anything um we also have seen pictures of kiki out with her little baby um it looks like she's very upset um actually looks like she's about to cry in this one um wow Mm, 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 mm. you really never know what's going on uh, TMZ reports that Darius absolutely denies abusing Kiki and our sources say cops even came over and didn't find any probable cause to arrest him for DV they didn't even file a report we're told which our sources say backs up DJ's account well there is a restraining order with pictures attached to it so that is is that not some type of report it's being reported to the authorities so and he has custody taken or she has a temporary full custody right now and he does not have visitation and she was granted her restraining order so that says something but of course people are trying to make it seem like like trying to discredit her and team z is just so sick for even putting this out here uh kiki palmer's ex darius jackson denies abuse claims after restraining order of course he would of course he would. What is he going to say? Yeah, I did that. I did that. No, he's not. So the other thing that is happening here, unfortunately, is that the mothers are getting involved. Kiki's mom, who spoke about both of the sons, Darius and I want to say Saranis, the one who was on Insecure, they're texting each other and now it's gotten super messy because they've found a way now to come against Kiki because allegedly some threats were made. So um, this is where it starts. Um, this is Darius's mom going to Sharon, who is Kiki's mom. She says, hello, how are you? I've tried not to get involved in my son's personal business, but I heard that you're going to put a bullet in my son's head. Well, then now we have to get involved with the authorities because you don't respect or value yourself. And I can see and can see no and can see no and can't. What the fuck? You don't respect or value yourself. And I can see no my son's life. Please shut the fuck up. From those pictures, your son has no concern over Kiki's life, who is her daughter, the woman's phone that you are texting right now okay like do i think that kiki's mom is going to put a bullet in darius's head no do i think that she was highly 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 livid with the fact that a man put his hands on her fucking daughter yeah yeah i do i do think that i do think that she says you might have to kill us all i will file a police report on you now whatever okay 
So then Sharon responds and says, please do not contact me with this ridiculous childish behavior. Your son choked his own sister. Deal with his anger issues. Exactly. So apparently there's a sister through all of this who has also been affected. What the fuck? If he attacks my daughter in her own in her own home where she pays the bills, he is trespassing and any uh, and anything can happen. So he should stay away. You um you should be very ashamed to have raised a man who fights women. So now they're back and forth in the fucking text. Um, it's just. And she should be ashamed. She should be ashamed that she came at her in this way, talking about some O, oh, and only reached out once Sharon released this audio saying pretty much that she, like, I'm not going to play the audio. Um, you better, you better well. Watch out. Get a in your okay, so you hear that, Sharon saying, you better watch out or you're going to get a bullet in your motherfucking head. She's fucking pissed off. You put her hands, put your hands on her daughter. It's It's seen on the fucking pictures and we haven't even seen the video okay um maybe they'll release that since people want to act like they don't know what the fuck is going on uh but yeah it's, it's just getting dirty it's getting dirty and i think that these people are really trying to get a come up i think that the plan for darius was because he was apparently dealing with multiple other women he went with the one who had the most cash which was kiki he got in that relationship, fucked with her head, isolated her, did what toxic abusive guys do, then managed to get her knocked up. And now he has a reason that he can try to get child support and wrangle her into whole, all types of legal situations and this, that, and other, and fuck with her life for many years and always be there because they share a child. So that's 18 plus effing years. He's always going to be there. That is why we have to be so careful with who we have children with. And I am not trying to blame Kiki in any way, shape or form because she did not know this man was gonna turn out to be this way. We don't, like we still don't, like we're in relationships with people but we still really don't know them. You don't, you know what people want you to see. You know what I mean? So she did not go into the situation thinking that this man was going to be toxic, abusive, and um, want to scam her. She just didn't. And we, none of us, regular people, go into relationships thinking that they're going to end up being toxic or, you know, unhealthy and this, that, and the other. We go in hopeful. We go in in love. We go in in this, that, and the other with whatever the person presents to be to us. Um, so it really sucks. It really, really sucks for Kiki. And, um, now the families are involved now because Sharon said, you're going to get a bullet in your head. They have something that they could try to, uh, run a police report on or a lawsuit on to try to make some fucking cash. Um, scammers, fucking scammers, the whole lot of them, it seems like. And, um, they really should be ashamed of themselves. The fact that you want to reach out now did she reach out prior when the news came out that you know and you saw your son choking up somebody allegedly on the steps throwing them over um couches and stuff did you reach out to Sharon then no you just reached out once you heard her be completely fucking irate about the fact that your son was putting his hands on her daughter okay okay like people and, and, and it People are not believing Kiki. They didn't believe her with the whole Trey Song situation. And here we are now. They don't believe her in this situation. And that shit can really wreck your fucking mental health. So I am so happy that her mom is with her. Like behind her. In her corner. Supporting her. Um, that she has people who truly love her. And care about her. Um, because they were out to get her. They were out to trap her. Um, and I think they had a fucking plan whole fucking time and it really makes me think about if you're not watching segue a little bit um the family Chantel on hbo max oh my god that was a whole marriage scam that was a literal fucking marriage scam i cannot even get into that situation but like marriage scam you have to be careful who you involve yourself with like we really do and even still you don't know another thing that i've seen interesting that's come down my timeline is candy and todd of real housewives of atlanta you guys 
Now there have been rumors for years about these two kind of being on the outs. Um, I feel like they work very well as a team. They do their plays, they do the restaurants, all their businesses, this and the other. But I'm sure like that has to weigh heavy on a marriage when you're mixing business and pleasure and you're literally around each other all the time because you're working, you live together, this and the other. Um, it's a lot, it's a lot. And the fact that you are on a TV show, your life is out there in public, people know who you are, the curse of the housewives is that marriages don't last that long. Now Candy and Todd are going almost into their 10 years, I believe, but um, it's been a little shaky, especially with Candy's mother coming in thinking that he's been cheating with Carmen or cheating here, thinking that he's scheming, just trying to use Candy's money. Like there's always been stressors on their relationships, you know? And, um, but I always thought that they were friends at least and good, good, very, worked very well as business partners. Um, but it was also a lot of focus on Candy and what it was that Candy wanted to do in her projects because she was an escape. She was the breadwinner. Todd was more of the behind the scenes. He worked on, you know, Atlanta at, in production or whatever behind the scenes. And then... He started to feel like he wanted to focus more on shit for him. Things that were going to fulfill him. Like, so he wanted to do his movie that's um, been out on Peacock. He was writing that. So he wanted to focus more on things for him because all this time he's been doing shit for Candy. Pushing out her projects, working on her vision. And I do think when you have to put your shit on the back burner... Um, when you don't really want to and focus on other people's stuff, it can kind of build up a resentment that you don't even fucking know. And they do live in Atlanta. Now, Atlanta is a different type of lifestyle. And they live in the nightlife and going out to the bars and this, that, and the other. And apparently Todd's been doing a whole bunch of going out here lately. And Candy is not happy. She's not happy with it. And it's very apparent. And the streets are saying, unfortunately, that this marriage allegedly possibly may be on the outs. And given this conversation, it kind of feels like that. But I'm hoping that they can work through it because it is almost 10 years of a marriage. Um, but one thing that I forget who said it, but I, somebody said it. But like when couples start like arguing in public and they start doing that bickering and shit in public around people and stuff. Like Kyle and Mauricio, if you've been watching um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, typically means they're on the outs because they no longer give a fuck who sees or hears it. They've they've gone past the point of no return. Um, so Candy and Todd are having this conversation on live. I don't know if this is some type of show they do. I don't know what why this was even happening. And they're, Todd's getting his shape up. He's getting a haircut. Candy looks like she's getting her hair done, getting her makeup done by these two ladies who seem to have a lot of input on their marriage. Again, this is like a clip of something that's longer. So I'm not really sure if they're doing some type of show or whatnot. But these two ladies are very heavily involved in this conversation with Todd and Candy about pretty serious situation within their relationship. Todd going out and being out all night at the fucking club till the club like closes okay this man is not in his late 20s not even in his mid 30s like I believe he's like in his 40s mid 40s okay in my opinion I don't want my husband out in the fucking club till it fucking closes why why don't you want to come home like what like what what is out there that is keeping you out all fucking night that you feel the need to be out in a club and don't want to come home to the safety and warmth of your home and in what in, in in the bed with your wife like that is concerning so they're having this conversation and I'm just like oh my gosh like it really does feel like there's that like they're on like this is on a um downward spiral for these two so I will let you listen here. I'll get this next spot. So why is there a big deal? Like you know I'm okay. Right before you pull up to a bitch house, trying to make it seem right. like you ain't no. doing nothing. But you checking my you checking my location. So you know I'm at no chicks no no chicks house. 
Yeah, Unless the chick is lives at the club, or lives at Magic City, or I lives at a restaurant. Room. You said what? The champagne room. Oh my god. I just feel like there's no reason why you should be at a club and be the last person in there. Like, there's no reason that the club should be getting shut down, lights turned on, and you still mm. last one there all the time. Now, let me tell y'all, this has happened. So, it's a spot called Whiskey Mistress, right? I know the promoters who actually run the place. So, at times, we'll all be there. It's over. We'll just be there talking. Talking, oh yeah, pour another one. We just kicking. So it's not, and I don't do it often, but if I do it, it's just because you catching up with people. You guys have never hung out and after. You can catch up all them other six hours you was there? <laughs> the music is on. I'm talking about like the shit is off, they clean, and you just kind of. Oh, so talking. now you have helping people clean. No, I'm not saying I'm cleaning. Just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And you got your tracker. Y'all didn't even know she had the tracker. Like, y'all even know that's crazy, right? You know, it ain't crazy. You if you got a husband who like to stay out like that, man, you definitely should have a little uh location on your bed. If you got a husband, period. I don't mind you yeah. having a location, because God forbid anything happens to me. I want you to be able to find me. Exactly. So, Wait, so do y'all have each other's passcodes? Passcodes no. to what? To the phone? Yeah. No. We do. Candy might have it as much as I type it in front of her. First of all, I don't know. Why okay. do you always be trying to have like I'm over here no, trying to I didn't say it in code. a bad way. I said you might as much as I've typed it in front of you. I give you my phone all the time. Like don't act like I'd be like, wait, hold on. Let me clear this screen. You so Todd sounds like he's trying to explain himself. He's like, what's the problem with it? I'm having a conversation, you know, I'm just hanging out and chilling. Then the lights are out and stuff and we're cleaning up. So and then the ladies are like, oh, you're helping clean it up now. And he's like, no, but, you know, like now the lights are down and the music's off and we can have like a conversation. He's supposed to be hanging out with the owners. But it's just like, why? Like... <laughs> Why are you? Why do you feel the need to be out at three or four o'clock in the morning? And then he tries to add in that Candy has like this tracker on him, and the way he says it makes it sound so bad. Like when I when I think tracker, I think like those devices like in a movie that has like a beep 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 and like the light, and you stick it up underneath the car, and you can go on your little screen and like watch the car like every second and move. When that's what I'm thinking when I hear tracker. But I think that what he means is maybe like find your like when you share your location like on iPhone um, like I'm shared with my mom and my sister so should and vice versa they share with me so if anything happens to us we can go look on you know our locations to where we're at which I think is just a safety precaution across the board but for them it's a thing of where I want you to be where it is that you said that you were going to be because there's some concerns which is never good. Um, they bring up these two ladies who are doing the hair and the makeup, bring up if they're, you know, he has, if they have each other's phone passcodes and they don't. And I think that they're being so messy bringing that up because they can already tell that Candy and Todd, there's some distrust there. And Todd's like, well, as many times as I've opened my phone in front of Candy, I'm sure she knows my passcode. It's not like I'm trying to, like, um, hide my phone or whatever, da, 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 But, like, oftentimes, like, even if there's nothing in your phone, they still find a fucking way. They still find a way. Fucking please. Just because there's nothing in your phone doesn't mean fucking shit. Doesn't mean shit at all. But there, um, there's definitely something going on with Candy and Todd, and I would hate to see another relationship bite the dust. This has been a rough, rough year for marriages, relationships, love in general. Oh my gosh, um, it's been rough out here, and um, I don't know. It sucks because it's like marriages that have been for years, long, like long term marriages and relationships and stuff that are just like done up and like i don't know there's definitely something in the air i think there's some cosmic energy or whatever um there's definitely something going on with the atmosphere um that is making people just disconnect in this way and i just think it's really sad because i love love and um the relationships that like i said have been long term and we hate to see all those years go to waste
Um, so yeah, it's been a lot going on out here. I just hope Kiki is okay. I keep saying I hope she has 24 seven security because this man seems kind of unstable. Like you don't know what he's going to do at any given turn. He showed up at her house trespassing. So like, hopefully he's got the hint now that he has a restraining order against him, but Sometimes they're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and don't effing get it. So I hope she's good. And I will see you guys in another video. Stay safe out there and bye-bye. Uh,